We are gearing up for the best football game of the year. Super Bowl 54 set for this Sunday in Miami between the Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers. It's been a big year for the league celebrating its 100th season. Marianne Turk is the chief operating officer of the NFL. She also enjoyed a long executive career here in Canada, including previously serving as the president of Bell Media. And she joins us on the phone from Miami. Marianne, thanks very much for joining us. Pleasure to have you with us. That's great. Thanks for having me. It's fun. What What is the vibe down there? Obviously, everybody loves getting ready for Super Bowl weekend. Right. Well, I think it's a uh, it's a Super Bowl vibe combined with Miami vibe. So everybody's pretty energetic. There's a lot of things going on downtown with the um, NFL experience down here, uh, right in downtown Miami, and then um, a couple of uh, community events going on in, in different parts of the city and. Yeah, it's just it's it's pretty great. As you know, you, as you may or may not know, the st the stadium is like 45 minutes outside of downtown. So there's another whole uh, set of activities going on out there, including lots of rehearsals for a Super Bowl halftime and trying to keep the grass in shape for there, the big game. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And, and it, it's hard to think of another sport where you have such a marquee single event. Uh, how does it shape? the season? I mean, how does the business of the NFL revolve around something like the Super Bowl? Well, if you kind of reverse engineer from the Super Bowl back, yeah. I think what separates the NFL from other leagues is that every game really matters. So, you know, the, the playoff field is very, very tight and it's tough to get into. And then regular season is so competitive. I mean, the San Francisco 49ers, I think they only won four football games last year. Yeah. <laughs> something crazy. And now they're in the Super Bowl, right? So this this last to first uh, phenomenon that we have in, in the conferences is really um, it's really important, and that what that's what sort of defines the Super Bowl because you know it's on any given day it, it could be any team. You know, despite the the legacy that the Patriots have had, it really is um, fantastic. Like no one, I don't think, expected Lamar Jackson to be out so soon early in the in the playoffs and he would have been wonderful to watch here too but we're we're pretty excited about these two really really fast teams um, playing off on Sunday. Well you, you mentioned some of those key players and um, how is in, in an era where social media is enormous and so many of these players have a big social media footprint how is that changing the way that fans um, uh, get excited about the league? I mean, is it as much about the individual players today as it is about, say, an event like the Super Bowl or, or just which team you're rooting for? I think it's a combination of all three, right? And certainly we've been leaning in hard to help our players become personalities on social media and help them with that. And really, we have found, and it's showing in the numbers now in terms of fandom, that um, taking the helmets off and telling stories about these players and letting them have a little bit of fun with their personality and what they like, uh, what, what music do they listen to, what, what's their fashion, and you can see a lot of that across our NFL handles. NFL Canada does a really good job at that too, and then of course on the, uh, the players personally. And what that does is it, it really engages those casual fans and also engages the younger fans. Like we, um, our, our fandom right now, it was just the analysis was just done by an external third party, is the highest it's ever been in football in NFL history. Hmm. And we've got the highest number of female fans in history and the highest number of female avid fans in history. And I think it's this storytelling and getting people into the stories that really make them want to watch these players and root for them. And does that feed in, because a lot of people have talked about the ratings this year on television, both, both in Canada and the United States, you've got very engaged audiences. Does that work right alongside the social media stories that people are, are, are leaning into that you're talking about? Oh, I think it all goes together, yes. I mean, look, there's a whole, um, there could be a whole group of young fans that, um, you know, very rarely watch on television, but they're watching highlights or they're watching their favorite players or they're playing fantasy or any number of ways to engage. They're playing Madden. You know, it really is like one big funnel of activity and engagement. And what I'm really encouraging my team to do here at the league is let's look at engagement as engagement. And, and 
football popularity. Let's look at football popularity and fandom. And then we have to figure out how they're going to consume our product. And broadcast television ratings is one way they consume our product. But we've got hundreds of millions of people consuming, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of million consumptions on across social media. We just started on TikTok and we've got like over eight and a half million followers. Like we're the fastest growing league on some of these uh, platforms and it all works synergistically, you know, together. And that's what keeps um, fans engaged. Not, and not the least of which is the live in-stadium experience. So our owners are spending a lot of money and in investing carefully in stadium upgrades because they understand that, that food and beverage and access and egress kind of experiences at their stadiums on game day are really important to keep people coming back. Yeah, and just a, a final question, because obviously this was, you know, a, the, a celebration of the 100th season. You talked about some of that new technology that's there, but there's such a rich history for this league. Um, what's the game plan going forward in terms of navigating the way that those young consumers are, are, are gravitating towards the sport with the fact that there's, there's still so much tradition tied to the NFL. Right, and I think you saw that, and you'll see it, um, you know, in our spot this year that we do too. It's really continuing to honor the, the legacy and the tradition of what this league has meant uh, to the players, to the owners, coaches, communities, while nodding to the future in terms of understanding how we have to continually evolve and improve the product that we put on the field. Um, game competitiveness obviously is part of that, but also how are we going to engage with sports betting? How are all these things going to come together to sort of have engagement 2.0 as we go? But we don't, we don't rest, right? Like every, every season we sort of come out of the gates. How, how are things going to be different this year? What are we going to do to make things different? And I think that's that's really what will define the longevity of this league in the next 100 years is the, the competitiveness around continuing to be better and continuing to be bigger. Marion, thanks so much for your time. Enjoy the game on Sunday. Great. Thanks so much. Talk uh, to you soon. Bye-bye, Marion. Bye. Marion Turk, Chief Operating Officer of the NFL and the Super Bowl does air on CTV and TSN Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So 